the CIA triad, and we're not talking about intelligence. So when we talk about the CIA triad in cybersecurity, we're talking about confidentiality, integrity, and availability. These three things make up the core of defense of our networks. If we can guarantee the confidentiality, integrity, and security of our networks, we will have a secure network for us to operate in. Now, as a hacker, what we always focus on is how we can breach the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So what is confidentiality? Well, confidentiality answers the question of how secure is the information and how secure does it need to be. So if we have information like our social security number or our date of birth, that's information that we want to keep private because we don't want attackers to get that information. Conversely, if we look at something like my personal website, I want people to be able to see that, and so I have that out there without confidentiality attached to it. So it's not that you always need confidentiality or you don't need confidentiality. It really depends on your use case. So what are some good ways to protect your confidentiality? Well, some ways that we do this are physical things. For instance, if I have a file that I want to keep confidential, I might put it in a safe and lock it up. If I have information I want to keep confidential, I might use that as encryption. And I'll scramble up that data and save it in a different format so that people can't read that information. These are two ways that we can use confidentiality. And as an attacker, we look for the weakest part of the confidentiality train so that we can break into it and get the information that we want. So what is a failure of confidentiality? Well, simply put, if someone can read the information that you've tried to hide, that is going to be a breach of confidentiality. The second part of the CIA triad is integrity. And integrity is all about, has the data been changed? So the way that we actually keep track of whether data has been changed generally is by the use of something called a hash. And we create this checksum that actually looks at the data and creates a unique fingerprint of that data so we'll know if it's been changed. If you change even a single bit inside that data stream, the hash will become vastly different. To ensure we have integrity, it means that the data has not been changed in retrieval, in storage, or in transit. If we can do that, we can ensure that we have good integrity of our data. A failure of integrity is what happens when we have data that gets changed. So, for instance, if you look at your account balance and you have $1,000 and I change that to be $10, that would be a failure of integrity. The third part of the security triad is availability. And availability really focuses on, is the data available to be retrieved when you want it to be retrieved? So, if a server is up, that's good. If the server is down, it has no availability. The way that we can get availability is that we can have redundancy in our networks. So if I have two servers performing the function of one, if one went down, the second one would take the load. There would, be still, there would still be good availability. One of the most important things in availability is having good backups and good disaster recovery. For example, if I'm an attacker and I go after a server with a denial of service attack and I take down the server, can the company restore to another server in a very short amount of time? If they can, they can keep their availability up and keep their customers happy. But if they can't, then I can actually take this network offline by doing my denial of service. Their availability does suffer. So the last thing we want to talk about when we talk about our CIA triad is that it's not actually a perfect triangle. So really what comes down to is each of these things are important, but they're always important in different uh, amounts depending on your use case scenario. Sometimes you'll have people who try to get this perfect balance of all three, and honestly that just doesn't happen most of the time. Let's look at a couple of examples. So, in this example, I have a high confidentiality, high integrity, low availability. Now, what would be a good example of that? Well, let's say I have something that's really, really secret and really, really important and I don't want it to be changed. Like, let's say I have some uh, top secret plans uh, for the new Death Star. I wouldn't want the rebels to get a hold of that, so therefore I'm going to take that and I'm going to encrypt that data, giving confidentiality. I'm going to do hash checking so that if somebody makes a change in the plans, I'd be able to detect that but I might lock that inside a safe and put that safe inside of a locked room and that room inside of a locked building, and so it's really hard to get to. So my availability might be low, but I'll have very good confidentiality and very good integrity. That's really important if you have important data that needs to be kept safe. Another way to look at this is where we have low confidentiality, but high integrity and high availability. A good example of that would be a website. For example, if you go to my website, I want you to be able to see the images and the text that I put up there, meaning that it has good integrity, that it hasn't been changed. But I also want it to be highly available. I want anyone to be able to get to it. There's no usernames needed, there's no passwords needed, because I just want you to be able to view it. So in this case, I have very low confidentiality, but high integrity and high availability. So the last thing we want to talk about is this trade-off that occurs. We have this trade-off that happens between operations and security. And it always happens. If you look in your workplace environment, you will want to have high operations because you want to be productive and make a lot of money in your company. But you also want good security. And the problem is, as you increase security, often the operations end up suffering. And the reason for that is there's always this trade-off. For example, if I require everyone to log in with a username and a password and a token, that's a little bit harder on operations, so it slows them down. But it gives me much better security. 
Uh, conversely, if I let everyone just log onto the computer with a shared account that everybody has the same username and password, I have zero security, but it's very quick and efficient to do. So there's always going to be this trade-off, and we have to consider that when we build our systems. Now, as an attacker, we're always going to be looking at where are those places that operations has taken over and security has lapsed. For example, if five people are using the same username and password, I can go after any one of those five people using social engineering attacks and be able to get that username or password, and now I can break that system.